Uh, John Jones has taken on uh, Ovince St. Preux. Uh, what was your first thoughts when you heard about this fight? Well, you know, uh, John Jones is a tall order for anybody. And even I would put him as a tall order for a lot of the heavyweights out there. So, uh, you know, the, it's no secret that John Jones is a heavy, heavy favorite. I think he's the better striker, grappler. Uh, you know, I mean, he has more experience. Uh, he's just got, he's got all the check marks on his side, in my opinion. Uh, but then again, Ovens is game. He's very game, so I think he has a small chance of winning. I, I forgot to be brutally honest here. I think he has a small chance of winning, but it'll be an entertaining scrap at least. But something that you and I have talked about before is probability and the likelihood of things happening and black swan events, you know? All kinds of things happen. Let's say we were to run this fight 1,000 times in 1,000 different universes, whether Ovin St. Preux <laughs> wins three of those fights, or 53 of those fights, or 70 uh, of those fights, who knows? But if Ovince is gonna have the right kind of night, what does he need to do? Well, he needs to connect on the chin of John Jones. He absolutely needs to connect on the chin of John Jones. I think if you look at his last fight with, with Texiera, he, 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 he had him hurt. He had Texiera hurt, and he could have put him away, but he threw a body kick and got taken down and then the momentum swung back towards uh, uh, Tixera's side again. I think he can't make mistakes like that with John Jones. If he does hurt John Jones, if it does happen, he needs to play it perfectly. So not only does he have to hurt John Jones, he has to play perfectly because John Jones always has, has that takedown escape. If he gets in any trouble, he'll just get that takedown. And um, we know we know Ovince is, is, is not a ground specialist. You know, he's not a ground specialist. So I think it's, the, it's too easy of a takedown for John Jones if he gets in trouble. So let's pretend we coach OSP now. And uh, we're looking at the idea of where, you know, even psychologically for himself, how he can be a tough fight for Jones. And why don't we look at the idea that he trains a little different. So his, he's a little different than the average training partner. He's super athletic. He's very explosive. Uh, he strikes backing up and he strikes moving in different directions. He knocked out both uh, Shogun and uh, uh, Cummins ba while backing up. So he's got a few little different things. How does he try to make it about these surprise moments? I agree with you. His, his best asset is his athleticism and his timing. Those two shots he landed were, were beautiful. I mean, perfectly timed. Um, but I don't think John Jones is going to leap in forward like that and give yeah. him that opportunity to, to step off and, and throw a big shot. But if he does beat John Jones, that's the way. So I would, I would, I would if I was coaching OSP, if, if we were in his corner, I would tell him, to use his hands, do not kick. A kick will be too easy of a takedown for John Jones. You remember John Jones took down Cormier after Cormier kicked him. If he could take down Cormier off a kick, I mean, he can't take down anybody off a kick. So um, it's not just what he does, it's what he doesn't do. I think kicking for OSP would be disastrous against John Jones. John Jones is a Muay Thai specialist. He's seen all sorts of expert kickers. OSP is a more, he's more of an expert puncher than he is yeah. a kicker. So it's not just what he, he should do, it's what he shouldn't do. Right. If OSP kicks, it will backfire on him. So if I was his corner man, I would want to up his odds as best as possible. And I would tell him not to kick whatsoever. All right, so now that leaves us with a big problem. And that is that John Jones is a great kicker and John Jones is very good from the outside distance. Now I've watched your videos, how to fight the taller man. You've done two, <laughs> two videos on that. We got to deal with that. Yes, John Jones only has a four and a half inch reach advantage. And I say only, even though that's enormous, compared to a lot of Jones fights, it's a little smaller. We now need to deal with that, not only the taller man, but a taller man who can kick when we cannot kick. So what do we do? Well, it's even worse than that. He can't even clinch with John Jones. Could you imagine if they tie up in the clinch? John yeah. Jones, is a, you know, he has a heavy background in Greco and yeah. freestyle wrestling and Muay Thai, you know? So, I mean, he's gonna elbow you, he's gonna knee you. He's, gonna, he's got phenomenal elbows. His takedowns are absurdly good. Not only does he have to get on the inside, he has to avoid the clinch. So he has to not fly too high to this, towards the sun, you know. Now don't fight John on the outside, he's got that four inch reach. You go in on the inside, then he's, he's hell to deal with when it comes to the clinch. So OSP's got to find that right middle spot. He's got to get in that middle spot, deliver the goods, and disappear. Now that's something that takes a lot of experience and a lot of training. It takes a lot of um, uh, discipline and composure not to overextend yourself. It takes a lot of practice. 
Uh, I talk about that in my videos. I try to demonstrate it a lot in my videos. You want to go in, deliver the goods, and step off to the sides, as, a spo as opposed to stepping back out, like a lot of people do. When you step back out, you're, you're back in the line of fire. So to keep it super simple, he's got to get in, hit John Jones, and step off to, uh, to the right or to the left, circle out, and get out of the dangerous clinch, the possible clinch of John Jones. Well, I had to uh, spend about five weeks building a breakdown of Jones versus Cormier. And that was the moment, the, the moments that Cormier had the best moments were not obviously all the way out or all the way in, although he's very good in the clinch, probably better than OSP is. He's good in that pocket range with elbows and uppercuts and dirty boxing, but that he had his best moments in that range almost outside, just that tight circle right. boxing range. Um, and the reason I'm looking for the ways that OSP could possibly win this fight is because we don't believe that it's that likely that he wins this fight. We, we see it as the likelihood that John Jones, this is a lower level opponent with less experience, with less big fight experience than anybody Jones has really fought in the last five years. So Jones has huge advantages. Is there any chance that John Jones, as a result, focuses less or approaches this fight in a different mindset that undermines his skills? Um, I, I hope not, you know, because o OSP has that power. He has that athleticism. And if, if you remember his fight with Texiera, he scrambled out of a lot of positions when he was on the bottom and got back to his feet. And he didn't use really, he wasn't using technique necessarily. And he did a few things that maybe would be technically wrong in the textbook, but it worked and he got back to his feet. So when you have a guy who's like that, who's game, you know, in his last fight against uh, 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 Fijao, he hurt his foot in round one and he was limping. He was literally fighting off one foot and he still won the round so we can't just look at it as, as a textbook fight you know OSP brings to the table he brings gameness he brings heart uh, he brings athleticism he brings you know his ability to scramble he has good instincts if John Jones doesn't take him seriously this can turn into a, a bad night because he's not easy to put away OSP OSP is not going to be intimidated by John Jones he's not going to be intimidated and that's a huge plus he's going to throw that shot if he sees the opportunity so John Jones has got to be technically perfect, make it a technical fight. That's where John Jones has superiority in technique. If John Jones uh, takes him lightly and gets into a bit of a brawl and, and doesn't use his technique, he might be in for a surprise. So uh, uh, for us, we were talking about when, when uh, Jones is kicking at distance, we need to penetrate and, and breach that distance and get in close. When we do that, Jones is very, very good at you get in outside of his kicking into that spot, you're good, and he pushes into the clinch. He's very, very good at that game. How difficult is it during that moment when he pushes in? You breach inside, you feel that he's pushing, that's when you exit and land those punches that OSP landed on Shogun or Cummins. That timing of pushing in, sensing his movement to push back, and exiting with those strikes. Is that really a real rare uh, possibility is that is that a real dice roll unlikely moment no that that's that's where the victory lies in, in that specific timing you know, he's got to catch John Jones in between strikes that timing is the most crucial uh, aspect of fighting it's the most advanced aspect of fighting is timing you know people know their mechanics people know okay I got to be here during the fight I got to go to this position can you execute it at the right time do you have the timing and um, Again, I got to give the timing advantage to John Jones. He has the better timing. The one guy who timed him the way you're talking about mm -hmm. was Mashida, if you recall yeah. correctly. And he rung John Jones's bell. And what did John Jones do? He adapted. He switched his timing. He turned softball, did a Superman punch on, on, on the opposite side. I mean, he just adapted to Mashida's timing so beautifully. He stunned Mashida, hurt him, ended up putting him in a choke. Um, again, I have to give the timing edge to John Jones, but you're absolutely right. That is the key to victory if OSP were to win. Quick recap, Jones is gonna eat him up from the outside. OSP, when he moves in, can't move in too deep. If he does move in too deep, Jones advances to take him down. That's the moment he can time him like Machida did. Otherwise, Jones gets the body lock, takes him down, elbows his face in, and is the interim champion in the world. Am, am I, am I uh, warm here? I couldn't agree more. I think I think that's how it's going to go down. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. This and uh, let's definitely do a few more of these. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, breaking down some more fights with you. Thank you. Awesome.